I'd like for each of you to take a second and think about the last time you talked to your parents on the phone. Whoop, there we go. How did you open that conversation? Was it, hey, how are you? How's the dog? What'd you have for dinner? How's work? School's fun. Can you come bail me out? <laughs> now, the next time you go home, I want you to pay attention to how they start conversations with their parents. It's not, hey, how are you? It's, how are you feeling? Have you been taking your medication? Why is that? There's a shift that happens in nearly every family. Parents get older, they, their health starts declining, the number of prescriptions pile up, and the children try to become the parents. Brothers and sisters start having conversations over their parents' heads. Should we hire home health? Should we send them to a nursing home? Should they move in with us? Should we move in with them? I've seen these same conversations happen in my family with my parents, and I know if things don't change, then my brothers and I will have these conversations one day. Wouldn't it be nice just to always start your phone calls with, hey, how are you? Let's talk grandparents for a second. The three of us at N2 have each seen this happen in our own family. In mine, family members moved in. Scott's father-in-law actually drives from California to New Mexico once a month to fill his mom's med boxes. Adam's grandmother wouldn't let anybody in the front door, but would open the blinds once a day to let them know she was still alive. Give you one guess what her April Fool's Day was. <laughs> and another friend of mine actually went beyond any line I ever thought could be crossed. Same story, his mom did not want to leave her home. The whole family wanted to know she was taking her meds. He had his wife take his mom out to go get her hair done one day. He and his brother broke in and installed two web cameras in the house, one in the kitchen, one in the bathroom. They never told her about these cameras. They just logged on three times a day to make sure she was taking her meds. I think that might have been illegal. <laughs> so be it moving in, monthly visits, secret codes, even spy cams, each family has their own way of dealing with this, dealing with the, this inevitable situation. And it's all, all to answer, answer a simple question. But really, what are the costs of this? going to such, to such great lengths. Your grandfather is going to feel the stress, as does your family. He's going to start losing independence. People are looking over his shoulders now when they used to not. Family members are rearranging schedules. And really, at the end of the day, it can be demeaning. There's a loss of dignity that can occur. He's lived the same way for decades, and now suddenly we're saying it's not good enough. He does not want his children to try to become his parents. It all boils down to one simple question. Is he taking his meds? This question started popping up in my family, and that's when I began working on the issue. And N2 was founded because we believe that technology can help answer this question. But better than that, we can also help with the issues that arise from it, the loss of independence, the loss of dignity, all the stress that comes from this one simple question. So we have a simple goal at N2. We want you to take your meds, and we'll support you along the way. What we're talking about here is medication adherence. Adherence is simply how well you follow your prescriptions. You can, it's measured along a spectrum. You can be completely adherent and take all of your meds on time. You can be completely non-adherent and never take anything. And most people lie somewhere in between. But when we talk about adherence, we're not just talking about grandparents. This problem's huge. It's almost too big to imagine. Non-adherence is to blame for $290 billion in direct health care costs in the U.S. alone every year. Let's think about this in terms of just the number. If that number were a country, it would be in the top 25% of annual GDP across the globe. But more importantly, 125,000 people die in the U.S. alone because of non-adherence every year. Let's compare that to cancer. In 2013, of all the types of cancer, only lung cancer killed more people than non-adherence. It's also a problem as old as modern medicine. Take a second and look at this quote. Everybody's heard of the Hippocratic Oath. Hippocrates described this issue over 2,000 years ago. Granted, you might have been more likely to die if you actually took the meds back then, so it's probably a good thing. 
More than 10 years ago, the World Health Organization released a report saying that any improvements in adherence interventions would outweigh any, any advancements in medicine. If you search online, you'll find over 27,000 scholarly articles focused on adherence that span decades. We've been working on this problem for a long time. We've made a lot of improvements, but the problem is still there. So what do we know today? People are non-adherent for a variety of reasons. Everybody has their own. Some simply forget here and there. Others can't afford their meds. Others don't think they need them anymore. Still others don't believe or don't understand that their treatment plan is actually going to work. So a lot of the current research is focused on personalizing that intervention for the individual, and this is mostly through manpower. And they have seen great results from it, sometimes increasing adherence rates to above 90% across populations. Other studies show that a strong support system, family and friends who are really behind your treatment plan, can make a large difference and can be one of the best predictors as to whether or not you'll be adherent. So where does Intu fit in? How do we feel like we can actually make an impact in this issue? Well, today, society is going through a huge shift in technology and how we use it. Ten years ago, the only computer I owned was sitting on my desk at home, and it was the only thing that was connected to the Internet. Today, I carry around a laptop, a tablet, a phone. At home, my TV is connected, my security system is, we've got sleep monitors, baby monitors, and activity monitors, thermostats. You name it, it's got a connection to it. But what's really happening is technology is fading into the background. It's beginning to exist around us and adapt to us to make our lives a little bit easier. And we believe that we can take that same approach with the problem of adherence. Our goal is to adapt technology to your health. We're taking adaptive and intelligent technology to create a tool, a tool to improve adherence. Now to create this tool, we first return to our goal. We want you to take your medication and support you along the way. There are two big questions that come out of this. Who are we talking about? Who cares if you take your meds? Who's impacted if you don't? And who can make a difference in that? Who are we building the system for? And how? How are we going to, how do you take your meds today? How can we work with that, work around that? How are we best going to be able to support you? Let's start with the who. If you're on cardioprotective meds, half of you are, are, are non-adherent. You're 80% more likely to die this year. If you're taking statins for your cholesterol, again, half of you are non-adherent, and you're 25% more likely to die. I think it's safe to say that you and your loved ones both care. Everybody loves a good overnight stay in the hospital, right? Lukewarm soup, jello. As soon as you get out, you can't wait to go back in. They do not want to see you. 75% of all hospitals are being penalized this year because too many people have come back within a month of being released. 40, 40 to 50% of all treatments fail simply because of non-adherence. And if you're a heart failure patient, you're 40% more likely to be hospitalized. Your doctors care, your nurses care, hospitals, senior living, all of your healthcare providers care. And that's not to mention, off to the side, insurance cares. We average $2,000 per patient in the U.S. in physician visits because of non-adherence. That's every year. Pharmacies, pharmaceutical companies care. 30% of prescriptions are never filled. Over half are not continued as prescribed. That leaves four and a half billion dollars of abandoned meds sitting on the shelves every year. But at the end of the day, who pays for this through higher health care costs, higher insurance premiums, higher taxes? We all do. We all really care about this issue. So our who, our who got really big. And we realized what we needed to do is build an inclusive system. We need to bring others into the fold for support. If we look at the research, we need to enhance those support systems that are shown to work so well. And we need to have a level of transparency for healthcare providers to actually provide the best and timely, timely, best medical decisions in timely doses. So let's return to the how. How are we best going to provide the support? I know we've got a lot of younger people in the audience, and it may be hard to imagine that you take meds beyond hangover cures. So, 
What I'm going to ask you to do is put yourselves in the shoes of a 75-year-old for a few minutes. And if you are 75 and in the audience, thumbs up. We'll pretend like you're 95. So you're 75, relatively healthy. You've got just normal issues, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, arthritis, atrial fibrillation, abnormal heartbeat. You're on six different meds. You take these every day. You're on metoprolol for your high blood pressure, simvastatin for your high cholesterol, ibuprofen for arthritis, and warfarin for your AFib. You also take a baby aspirin for general heart health and a multivitamin just in case they work. <laughs> but, but let's be honest here. Nobody actually knows the name of their medications. We pay attention to the color, the shape, and the size of those pills. So we're going to drop the names off of here. You've got a pretty easy little system that you've set up. You've been doing it for years. You're 75 years old. You've been on these meds for the last 10 years. You have them lined up perfectly in your medicine cabinet. You just work your way from the green pill to the white pill to the red pill. Take those in the morning. It's beautiful. Well, you go and visit your grandkids for a weekend, and the little monsters give you a chest cold. And what does that chest cold turn into? Pneumonia. So you end up in the hospital for three days. Doctors come in at some point and say, your pneumonia is causing your kidneys to fail. It may be a temporary thing, so it's not too serious, but it's something we need to treat. So in three days' time, you now have two new, two new diagnoses, pneumonia and kidney failure. You're on moxifloxacin for your pneumonia. You're on furosemide for your kidney failure. Now, unfortunately, since you're on so many pills at this point, they're going to start treating you for reflux. So we're going to add omeprazole for that. Everybody with me so far? But we're not done yet. Since your kidneys are failing, we're going to move, we're going to get rid of the ibuprofen temporarily and switch you over to acetaminophen. And since you're on antibiotics, it may mess with your warfarin, so we're going to cut that dose in half for the next three days and monitor it. Still good? All right, let's play a little game. It's Friday afternoon, you've just been released from the hospital. What do you take? Can anybody tell me what that yellow pill's for or what the green one is? Who could? This confuses the heck out of me, I made the slides. So let me introduce you to the house guest that will never leave. Your medicine box. This is your only option as you age to actually or as you, as you build up these medicines to actually keep track of things. You've gone from taking a nice row of pills to now multiple doses throughout the day. Things are changing. It's getting complex. But what, how you get this medicine box is important. Your doctor doesn't hand this to you. Your daughter comes and brings it over. And she says, hey, Dad, we're going to sit down and fill this together. But better than that, I'm actually going to start going to your doctor's visits with you and take notes for what those medications are for and when you're supposed to take them. In three days' time, I've gone from nice independent row of medicine to now my daughter's there and she's trying to become my parent. So the how for our system is pretty clear. We have to enable patients to take their medication independently with dignity and naturally. Our system has to be passive. We have to fall into the background. We have to enable the patient to take it on their own, and we have to work around current habits and routines. We took these two lessons to heart, inclusive and passive, and built our system around them, and we call it Involve. In fancy terms, Involve is a medication adherence, monitoring, and intervention system. In basic terms, it's a helping hand. Involve begins with a device. This is the passive part of our system. We design these devices to have zero buttons, no extra processes that you have to learn, just an appliance that sits on your countertop. We have sensors within the devices that track what the contents are, so we know exactly what's in there at any given point in time. Our current design is what you've got to see behind me, and that's focusing on med boxes, because what we really want to do is target and help out those individuals who are most in need of it now 
and all roads eventually end up there. So our device talks with our web application where we can measure the contents against prescriptions and we know if somebody's taken too much of, of a medication, too little of a medication, or has missed a dose altogether. Then we built our system with two levels of inclusiveness. For those with a personal stake in your health, like your family members or you, if in the case of non-adherence, we will fire off a series of notifications, a phone call, text message, email. For the millennials, we have Snapchat coming next version. <laughs> Our second level of inclusiveness is for, is for the healthcare providers. We have on-demand adherence reports where they can log in and see if you're actually taking your meds. It's scary, but that information's not available to them right now and important decisions such as how much they're gonna dose a medication or, or which interventions they're actually gonna implement with you are based on incomplete information. So what we wanna do is close that loop. We're currently piloting the involved system right now with many more opportunities coming up in the coming months. And our nurses that we work with introduce us to their patients as the med box of the future. And we really hope that's true because we believe that we're making a tool for the patients, for the family members, and for the healthcare providers to improve adherence. To return to our goal, we really just want you to take your medication and support you along the way. But at the end of the day, all we really wanna do is make sure that you can always start your phone calls with, hey, how are you? <laughs>